We're gonna cover how to make your PCBs look amazing, the world's first ever PCB time lapse, and you have a chance to win free test gear. It's been said circuit design and layout is an art form, but some people have literally made it an art form art PCBs that are both aesthetically pleasing and functioning circuits. I've always wanted to make my own art PCB, so I gave it a shot and made this. This is just part of the whole project. There's more, including an attempt at time lapse, so stick around. First, though, we'll cover how to make an art PCB. I've always secretly wanted a custom label for my oscilloscope. I even made a super limited run for Dave Jones a few years back, but could never really show it or use it because it was for him. Oh, yeah. Dave's is a sticker like our normal labels, but when I saw the Oshpark After Dark PCBs and how stinking awesome they look, I knew my time had come. This was it. 2020 was my year. Keep in mind, this is going in through my head in like January 2020, so feel free to extrapolate the next 15 months. And here we are, it's spring 2021, and I'm finally ready to reveal the process. So here's how to make an art PCB, all with free open source software. Step one for adding art to a PCB is starting with a game plan. You have to know what you wanna make and how it's all put together before you even think about opening up your PCB design software. Trust me on this one. With a PCB, the variety of colors you can use is Super limited. You can only use maybe five colors on a PCB because of the fabrication process. So to understand what your final result will be, you have to understand the manufacturing process. It goes like this. First, you have the base FR4, a fiberglass circuit board material. Usually it's kind of yellow, but for mine, I use the Oshpark Black FR4. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Oshpark. I just think it looks really cool. And shout out to Dan at Oshpark Support for being super helpful with this project. It would not have looked nearly as good without his help. They also gave me 50 $20 Oshpark gift cards to give away to you. More on that at the end of the video. So the FR4 is your first color. On top of the FR4, the fab lays down a copper layer. This is usually for traces and ground planes, but we can use it as a copper color. Then the fab puts down solder mask. Solder mask comes in a bunch of different colors. This is what gives many boards their green color. It's green solder mask. There are a bunch of different colors depending on the fab. For the after dark, it's actually a clear solder mask so we can see the copper underneath it and also get this cool reflective matte finish. A quick warning, in your PCB program, you also mark where you don't want solder mask applied, so it's negative. You can see what the file looks like versus what the board looks like. It's a negative image. So the solder mask is color number three. The last color we can use is a metallic finish. Copper oxidizes, which is not good for electronics. So after the solder mask, the fab adds a metal coating to the exposed copper to protect it. Sometimes it's coated with tin or lead known as HASL and looks silver, but in this case, we used an Enig finish, which is literally a gold finish, about a 10th of a micron thick. With Enig, any exposed copper gets coated in three to five microns of nickel, and then the nickel gets coated in a bit of gold. So color number four is literally gold. PCB now stands for printed circuit bling. The last color is the silkscreen layer, which is white printing that you see on circuits everywhere. So color number five is your silkscreen. So to make an art PCB, you can use at most five colors, usually three or four is best because exposed copper and FR4 typically get covered up. Now that we know our colors, we're finally ready to start making our own art PCB. The first tool we need is an open source vector graphics program called Inkscape. It's like Adobe Illustrator, but free, and it has a PCB specific plugin we need. Take your art file and group each color into its own layer. Quick note, this is not an Inkscape tutorial or a KiCad tutorial, but a strategy tutorial. The main steps you need to take and not the specific clicks. So this should work even if the software updates and changes in the future. So we want a layered image in Inkscape where each color is one layer, and you know what PCB layer those colors correspond to. For example, on this board, I started from this Adobe Illustrator file I got from R&D, rasterized the colors, and imported it into Inkscape. Once we have our color layers, we also need to define the shape of our board. So the fab knows where to cut the edges and where to make holes. These cut lines should be just a line in Inkscape, not a solid polygon or shape. So now we have our colors and our board shape. It's time to bring them into our PCB tool. Download and install the SVG to Shenzhen Inkscape plugin. This lets you save vector layers in Inkscape as PCB layers. Awesome. So take each of your layers and one by one assign them to a PCB layer using the SVG to Shenzhen plugin. 
Now we have a set of files we can use in our PCB tool. I've done all this with KiCad, which is an open source PCB design tool. Take each of your files from SVG to Shenzhen and import them as a footprint into KiCad. Once you have a footprint, you can drop them into PCB new. I recommend starting with your cuts since that will give you an outline to work with. And then pulling in your metal, mask, and silk layers. If you want to make a functional art PCB, all you have to do is make a normal PCB, but then also do all that stuff we just did. Again, coming in with a solid game plan is incredibly important. You want to make sure your PCB is routable and dropping gold art features isn't gonna get in the way of your actual circuit routing. Then just export your board and send the Gerbers to the fab. Once you have a plan, there are only three main steps to make an art PCB. First, prep your art file putting each color and cut lines on their own layer or even their own file in Inkscape. Second, export the files from Inkscape with the SVG to Shenzhen plugin and add these files as footprints in KiCad. Third, place your new art footprints into PCB New and export to the fab. For my boards, I ended up just getting my whole own panel. Smaller PCBs are usually fabbed on these larger panels with multiple circuits per board. And I had extra space on the panel, which to me meant one thing. Whoa. Free PCBs. So with very limited time, I whipped up an LED strip top panel, and I was smart enough to not put a year on that one, and a bunch of these little 20 millimeter circles. I thought, since I had nothing to lose, why not make a time lapse for video intros and outros, and not just a time lapse where the things move around on camera, but where the art on the board itself changes. I recorded the entire PCB time lapse making process start to finish. It wasn't that exciting, but then I accidentally deleted all the files anyway. So instead, here's an accurate representation of me making these files. This is how the magic happens. And a mere 15 months later, we have the world's first ever attempted PCB time lapse. Surely no one is bored enough to have tried this already. I haven't actually seen these yet. I just got the files back like 10 minutes ago, so I'm curious to take a look. <laughs> it's so short. Oh, we spent so much time. <laughs> Maybe we loop it in editing. <laughs> Fortunately, I knew it would be so short, so we put together a longer time lapse that's both a traditional time lapse and part PCB time lapse. Let's take a look at that one. That's actually pretty cool, I'll take it. There's one more time lapse that I'll put at the end of this video. I'll also link some other helpful art PCB guides down below. And there's a link for Keysight University Live, which is happening right now. Come join me, I'm giving away a ton of free test gear, test gear and live streaming every Tuesday, including giving away this scope. And there's a ton of other neat stuff going on, like this little guy, so go see what that's about, you could get one. And if you missed the first half of the event, there's a ton of catch up. Today's test gear winners are here. And a huge shout out to Osh Park for their help with this project and gift cards. The first 50 people to email KULive at keysight.com with the subject line printed circuit bling will get a code for a $20 gift card. I might even ship out a couple of these as well. Please only email me if you're actually going to use the code with Osh Park. And also thanks to EuroCircuits for letting me use their fabulous fab footage. They're not affiliated with Osh Park, but they do have a couple excellent videos that go into the PCB fab process in more detail. And if you're in Europe, you should go check them out. Out. There's a link for those below. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah.